Tonight on News Center, we have a scary good time at the Student Government Association's Fall Fest. Music fills ADUCK's theater at the Songwriting Showcase. And we get an interstellar view of the Star Theater's open house. All this and more tonight on News Center. Welcome to the News Center's Halloween special. I'm Heather Parks. And I'm Xander Mack. We want to remind our viewers that they can find all of our episodes on msu.tv or on YouTube at msutv77. Here is what is making headlines for October 26, 2023. Morehead State University's homecoming starts next week from October 30th to November 4th. There are many events planned to celebrate all coordinated with, M with members and friends of the university. MSU encourages all alumni and current students to join in on the festivities to celebrate and come together as Eagles. A full list of the events, homecoming court, group reunions, and more are available on the MSU Alumni and Relations Development website. Under homecoming, New Center will be covering the week's festivals, so make sure to tune in to see all the excitement of the 2023 MSU homecoming. The Student Government Association hosted its fall festival yesterday. News Center reporter Justin Tabor was on the scene to catch an evening full of fall fun. Yesterday, the SGA had their fall festival where students were treated to an evening of fun. I spoke with SGA President Presley Boyer and the Secretary of Campus Involvement, Emma Sherman, for more details on the event. So, Fall Festival started about three years ago. Um, my first term as Campus Involvement, just like Miss Emma, um, I started the tradition and I've only seen it grow over the years. It's gotten tremendously larger just this past year. Um, I'm very excited for the insane turnout that we got this year and I could not be more proud of Emma. Um, basically, we have over 60 registered student organizations, community groups, and um, MSU departments set up with tables offering fun fall activities for students. The goal of the event is to get students out and about on campus and also make them aware of opportunities that they have access to. Um, we're so happy with the turnout. Really, we just want to make the college experience the best it can be, um, and this is a great way we think we can do that. Wow, it's amazing. I mean, we've got live music. We've got all these amazing booths. Um, it's a great opportunity for people to get out of their comfort zone and just to meet other people like them. They've got it really put together actually. They've got all kinds of games as well as food such as cotton candy and all kinds of people are out here dressed up just having a good time. I'm hoping to stay for as long as I can and you know maybe get involved with some of the tables and maybe win some prizes at these tables that have uh, games. For News Center, I'm Justin Tabor. If you want to find out more about the Student Government Association and their events, follow their Instagram at Mohead State SGA. Get ready for a night of fright. The Campus Activities Board is doing a scary movie night at Ada Theater tomorrow. They'll be showing the movie Halloween Ends and giving out free popcorn. You can have a chance to win a comfy blanket, gift cards, and a Roku streaming device, and more possible prizes. It starts at 7 p.m., so don't miss out on a night of gifts, popcorn, and horror. For more information on campus events, follow CAB's Instagram at CAB underscore MSU. Prepare to get your scream on this weekend. The Cave Run Symphony Orchestra is hosting their Halloween concert this Sunday. The first concert of the 2023 season will be hosted at the Moorhead Conference Center near the Kentucky Folk Arts Center. Admission is $15 and you can get a season pass for $40. For more information about the Cave Run Symphony Orchestra and their concert dates, visit their website at crsomusic.org. Later in the broadcast, students and others get to show their lyrical genius in the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music Songwriting Showcase. For now, through, let's check out the weather with our very own Abby Perry. Abby, how's it looking out there? It's looking like autumn out there, Xander, but it's anything but cool temperatures. It is currently 76 degrees out there, so it is very toasty, all things considered. However, it is perfect trick-or-treating weather. We'll take a look at the extended forecast and more later in the program. Looking for broadcasting experience? The Moorhead State Public Radio has got you covered. Collaborate with others to report on local events or even pitch an idea for a program. Then go live on the radio station. 
Before you know it, you're a pro. If you would like to listen or be a part of Moorhead State Public Radio, check out their website at wmky.org or tune in on 90.3 FM. Are you ready to kickstart a career in journalism? Then come join the Trailblazer, Moorhead State University's newspaper. Work with others to write intriguing stories to build your resume. Take awesome photographs for new stories. Then get published on the Trailblazer website. To learn more about the Trailblazer, contact faculty advisor John Flavel or visit the Trailblazer's website at thetrailblazer.net. Calling all Barbies, it's time to go party. The Cardinal College of the Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences is hosting a free screening of the summer blockbuster, Barbie. The movie will be followed by a discussion of contemporary feminism led by Gender Studies Director Dr. Burnett Barton and Social Work Director Dr. Becky Davison. The screening will be held in the Aduct Ballroom on November 7th from 6 to 9 p.m. For any questions on this event, email Dr. Burnett Barton at b.barton at moreheadstate.edu. Moorhead State University Career Services is about to hold its LinkedIn Lab this semester. Staff will be at the Burke Holmes Building on November 9th from 2 to 2 4 p.m. They are offering free advice on connecting with future employers. You can come by for help on building job networks, LinkedIn profiles, and expanding your professional profiles. The lab aims to help students secure successful careers and internship opportunities using LinkedIn Lab and its services. If you would like to know more, call the Center for Career Development and Experiential Education at 606-783-2233 or visit their office on the ground floor of the Cam and Carroll Library. ADEC was filled with numerous performances from the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music Songwriting Showcase this past week. New Center's Andrew Evans was there. The Songwriting Showcase took place in the Adrian Doran University Center's theater room on the first floor. The KCTM hosts the showcase every semester as part of their class projects. The students that performed played various instruments and most even sang. Some of the music at the showcase consisted of bluegrass, country, and even a solely instrumental piece. Each song lasted between three and five minutes long, and most of the students at least played an instrument in each other's pieces. Some of the students even presented multiple songs such as Lucy Becker. And it almost feels like home. The KCTM classes are available for all and encouraged for everyone to enroll in, regardless of experience. For New Center, I'm Andrew Evans. If you are interested in finding out more about the KCTM and our events, visit them on Instagram at KCTM Music. Morehead State Gaming is calling all ghosts and ghouls out to their Halloween Spectacular costume ball this Halloween. The club will host live game shows this October 31st from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. There will be a costume contest with prizes, video, and board games. Entry to the balls are $3 and $2 extra to enter into the contest. To find out more about the night and MSU's gaming, follow them on Instagram at Moorhead State Gaming. A watercolor class taught by MSU alumna Linda Brewer is presenting their annual exhibit, Multiple Viewpoints, at the Rowan County Arts Center from now until November 3rd. Stop by and see the 48 different pieces by the 13 artists in the class. 
The show is displayed in the main gallery and is free to the public. Tomorrow, the artists are having a meet and greet from 4 to 5.30 p.m. to talk and answer questions about their artworks. To find out more about the art exhibit and others like it, check out the Rowan County Arts Center website at rowancountyarts.com. Still ahead, News Center has the latest coverage from MSU Sports this past week. Also, News Center had a chance to visit Moorhead State Space Science Center and their community event this past week. And stay tuned as News Center has all the details on the Ceramic Guild's Empty Bowl fundraiser to raise money to help families this Christmas. We'll be right back right after this. Come down to Moorhead State University Campus Post Office, located at ADUC. On the first floor, through glass doors, you'll be able to find the helpful staff along with your package or packages. Learn how you can empower yourself and others with College Moxie. College Moxie is a student organization that is all about women supporting women. Moxie's core values are lead with love, speak with respect, and engage with truth. You can find out more and join on their Instagram at Moorhead College Moxie. Elevate and power impact with College Moxie. Ahoy Eagles and welcome back to News Center. I'm your weather anchor, Abby Perry. As we looked at current conditions earlier, let's go a little more in depth. It is currently 76 degrees and mostly sunny, so it's still very warm despite the autumn colors outside. Humidity at 59% and winds at nine, excuse me, winds at seven miles per hour. Tonight's forecast, we are looking at cloudy skies with a low of 61 degrees, so it will still be comfortable, but bring a jacket. 25% chance of rain and sunset at 6.22 p.m. Across the state of Kentucky, we are looking at warm mid-70s in the Louisville, Frankfurt, and Moorhead area, not excluding Lexington. And down in Bowling Green and Paducah, we are still in those 80 degree weathers. Tomorrow will be partly sunny with a high of 77 degrees and sunrise at 7.54 a.m. So today, tomorrow, and the day after will be very warm, so plan accordingly. Like I said, from Thursday to Saturday, we'll be relatively warm before we experience a shivering, frigid dip from Sunday to Wednesday with lows as extreme as 31 degrees at night. So please be careful if you plan to go anywhere and dress accordingly with many layers. Across the United States, we are looking at cooler and cooler temperatures typically, but very cool temperatures up in Montana, Great Falls. We are going to experience a frigid cold front coming down from the north. So plan accordingly in your future weeks as to where you plan to be outside. On this day in Moorhead history, a year ago, October 26th, we had a high of 59 degrees and a low of 46 degrees. So a difference of about 20 degrees between today and last year. Humidity was at 56% as well. When we come back, we'll kick it off to Justin Tabor with your MSU sports scores and updates. that represents you? Moorhead Alliance has got you covered. This student-led organization offers an on-campus community to LGBTQ students and allies. Meetings are held Wednesdays at 5 p.m. in ADUC room 301. Follow us on Instagram at alliance at MSU for more information on how to get involved and stay connected. 
We hope to see you there. Whether it's just for fun, or for your daily exercise, or even for your assignment, the Eagle Lake Trail has something that is just for you. Get ready to have some fun with the Canvas Activities Board. Keep in touch with campus life. Make some new friends and embrace your creativity. Even get the chance to win some awesome prizes. The Campus Activities Board has plenty in store just for you. To be on the lookout for more events from Campus Cab, check out their Instagram page at cab underscore MSU. The Campus Activities Board, bringing more fun to Moorhead. Hi, I'm Justin Tabor, and I'm here with your new center sports updates for the week. Starting off with some MSU soccer, our Eagles went northwest last Sunday to battle Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, taking a resounding 2-0 win to close out the regular season. Heading into the game, the Eagles have been on a defensive tear against their opponents throughout the season, allowing only three goals in the last nine OVC games, and last weekend was no different. MSU's goalie Aaron Gibbs has spearheaded the defense in this game and took control of the tempo of the match quickly. Despite CU's advantage in shot attempts, no goals would hit the net for the Cougars. As we take a look on the offensive side, MSU's Kate Larbs nailed two goals and scored the two only points in the game for both sides. Overall, it was a one-sided battle and was a perfect way to cap off such a solid season from our Eagles. With the end of the regular season, our Eagles finalized their season record at 7-5-5 five, five overall and a dominant 6-1-2 in the OVC. They've secured the second seed in the OVC tournament and look to use all the momentum built this season in the semifinals against either Sioux, Eastern Illinois, or Southeast Missouri on November 2nd. Next up, MSU football traveled all the way down to Texas following their win in Valparaiso to face Tarleton State, unfortunately losing ground in a 42-0 loss. The contest actually marks the first time MSU has traveled down to play in the Lone Star State. TSU were consistent with scoring early on, taking an early first quarter drive before booming for a 21-point second quarter, which started to put the game away for the Eagles. Carter Cravens and our offense struggled to get past TSU's defensive pressure, throwing only 9 of 24 on the night with 114 passing yards. Other Eagles, such as Jaleel Holmes, put on a solid effort for MSU, recording a career-high 13 tackles during the game. It was a rough setback, but our Eagles will regroup and hope to bounce back next weekend. Following the loss, MSU goes down to 3-4 and four on the season, as they'll get a little rest before having to travel across the country to California this weekend and take on San Diego University. Next, MSU Volleyball was in Missouri last weekend to take on Lindenwood in a two-game series, losing the first game and taking the other. The first game on Friday saw Lindenwood defeating MSU 3-1 to, to start off weekend action. Moorhead would survive the first set, taking it by two points, before the Lions were able to adjust and take the rest of the sets decisively. M.E. Hargan had a match-high 17 kills to lead MSU, while also hitting for 26%. On the defensive side, both Irene Wilgenstahl and Macy Wellborn held it down for the Eagles, recording seven blocks and five rejections respectively. Saturday's game saw MSU bouncing back after Friday's loss, taking the game 3-1 to one to close out the weekend action. The Eagles overall had a way better time containing Lindenwood, only dropping the second set while taking the others. Once again, M.E. Hargan had a spectacular showing for Moorhead, this time recording 21 kills to lead the Eagles to victory. Three Eagles also recorded double digits in digs containing the offense Lindenwood was able to take advantage of in Friday's game. After both games against Lions, our Eagles sit at 12-11 and 11 on the season and 5-6 and 6 in the OVC. Our Eagles will host OVC rivals UT Martin this weekend in a doubleheader starting tomorrow for Greek night and pink out night tomorrow. That's all I have for you this week, but don't go anywhere as we'll take a look at some more news and some viewer submitted photos right after this. The Breckenridge Hall Computer Lab has every tool that you need for your assignments and projects. Professionally edit video with Premiere Pro, or give your artwork that final touch in Photoshop. 
and utilize various applications available to all students to tackle anything. So come on down to Breckenridge Hall, room 334, available at these hours. Next semester, spring 2024, the course Comics and the Graphic Novel will be offered on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from noon to 12.50. On the forums, it will, the class will focus on the form and features of the comics, along with exploring the different developments of the medium. Its distinct qualities are more than, are more than the class can count for the genre requirement for English, English education, and creative writing majors. To find out from, more about the course, Email Nicholas James at ntjames at moreheadstate.edu. If you are hungry and looking to help others, the Ceramics Guild has got you covered. The Guild is hosting their empty bowl sale with a Rowan County Christmas to raise money to help others with the holidays. On November 2nd, from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., the groups will be selling handcrafted bowls and homemade chili for only $15. The sale takes place at the American Legion Post 126 here in Moorhead. Make sure to stop by and show some holiday love and support. For more information on the sale and the Ceramics Guild, follow them on Instagram at MSU Ceramic Guild. The Space Science Center on campus organized community outreach that was out of this world. New Cine's Kylie Pollitt went to learn about what's beyond the stars. The Moorhead State University Space Science Center set up for an event to take people in the Moorhead community to the moon. So this is International Observe the Moon Night. It's observed all over the world, probably by a lot of planetariums. And um, we have we've celebrated every year since I've been here. So this will be our third year doing it. And we also call it an open house because everything we do is here. So we've got, of course, the Star Theater. We've got back-to-back uh, -back shows going on. And uh, we'll have a live night sky in there. And if the weather permits, I'm not sure if it will not because it's become overcast, we'll take the telescopes out in the patio. Along with the star and laser light shows, the Space Science Center's Observe the Moon Night also had live music from the Commercial Music Ensemble and various STEM educational outreach activities for kids, including a slime lab. Student organizations also provided fun activities for children, such as the Astronomy Club, Rocket Club, and the Society of Women in Space Exploration. So I'm here representing the Rocketry Club. Um, uh, that's, uh, I'm the president of the Rocketry Club, and uh, we was asked from the uh, planetarium to uh, come here and set up a little booth uh, and just spark creativity through, uh, through well, our booth. So uh, we have multiple things going on. Uh, one, they get to build their own little rocket, which is pretty awesome. Not everybody gets to do that. But uh, they also will be able to learn about the Rocketry Club, um, safe rock rocketeering practices, and uh, all types of other pretty cool stuff regarding space. For some, this was their first time in the Space Science Center. Oh gosh, uh, when we found out they had a space, you know, space degree here, science degree, uh, I had no idea. One of my former, I had played baseball here back in the early 90s, so one of our former teammates was up here and he said, don't you realize that they have a space program up here? And I was like, no, I did not. So our oldest was, that's what she wanted to do. So uh, we ended up coming up here and touring and that was the first time we actually came in and looked at the building and I was just blown away. We didn't see everything in here at the time, but, uh, but we were shown around at that time. But today I've seen pretty much everything in here and it's fantastic. So. Star Theater Director, Dr. Pamela Clark, hopes the event sparked the community's interest in space exploration. I'm hoping that they learn to love the solar system and the moon as much as we do and, and understand how exciting and wonderful exploration is and be encouraged to, to know more about what we're actually doing here and participate in it. This is Kylie Pollard reporting for News Center. 
To find out how to get involved with future space science events, visit moreheadstate.edu slash star theater. Ahoy Eagles and welcome to Boor Submitted Photos. I'm Abby Perry and I'll be showing you what we have this week. If you'd like to see your photos up on our broadcast, please email us at msutvweather at gmail.com. Let's get right into it. This is a photo submitted from Marshall Scott of our sky earlier today. Very wispy clouds. Earlier this week we have from Samantha Tavin, more cl cloud shots. Very beautiful and of the changing leaves and colors. Earlier still, we have from Hannah Walker, the trees on the borders of campus. Very beautiful changes in colors. It's only for a limited time, so see them while you can. And some of the wetter conditions we had earlier. If you would like to see these photos, again, email us at msutvweather.com. And we'll be back with more news after this. Do you want more energy? Hi, I'm Dwayne The Wreck Johnson. When I want to get in shape, I go to The Wreck Center. Here, you can catch up on your cardio. Pick up a bit of weight. Yoga. Work the machines, and I don't mean your bodies. Recreation. So get healthy, be happy. In the center of Moorhead State is the Claypool Young Art Building. This building is home to the university arts, like web design, studio arts, fine arts, and more. On the second floor, there is a working art gallery. And this gallery is open to students to enjoy the art and some quiet during their workday. Located all over the building and along the hallways, there are student-made displays. Head over and check it out. Morris State University is requesting all students to complete a campus-wide survey they created with the University of Michigan about student health and wellness. The Healthy Mind Survey is meant to help educators better understand student mental health and improve their students' quality of life. It takes about 30 minutes to complete, it is completely confidential, and participation entries enters you in a drawing for one out of 100 prizes ranging from free parking passes to gift cards. Every MSU student has received the email with a link to the survey. The link will be open until November 13th. Hoping to catch a good meal with your family before all the homecoming festiv festivities? Moorhead Alumni Association is hosting breakfast with Beaker at The Rock for a morning of family, food, and fun on November 4th at 10 a.m. Bring your family by for a delicious meal and get to meet our beloved mascot Beaker before the homecoming football game. Later that evening, the association will give out meal vouchers that can be picked up on arrival so that every family can eat for free. For more information on the numerous homecoming events on the Alumni Associations, visit the Moorhead State website. The MSU Foundation recently announced a new scholarship to benefit music students. The Luis and Arnani D. Amidio Scholarship Endowment is a fund dedicated to helping the next generation of music majors and honors the memory of the MSU alumni Luis D. Amidio and her husband Arnani. D. Amidio graduated from Morehead State Teachers College in 1943 and went on to become a mentor to other students interested in vocal and instrumental music for 30 years. The scholarship has been created by their son, Russ D'Amedio, to celebrate his mother's 80th graduation anniversary. All guidelines and re requirements for the scholarship can be found on the Moorhead State website. For more information on establishing scholarships and paid gifts, contact MSU's Office of Alumni Relations at 606-783-2033. That's all the news from us ghosts and ghouls here at New Center. We want to wish everyone a home, a safe, spooky Halloween. Tune in to next Thursday. Good night and thanks for watching.